when do you watch the hitter and how are you able to react on a bunt? So Mike's going to talk about that. Let's roll a little video and show you what we got on these balls hit at people. Look, it's, here's a bunt defensive play. Obviously, this is a different wheel play. What are you doing on this? We're going to go through all these types of scenarios. You see the third baseman in with the left hand hitter, first and second. How do you read this, make the play, boom. But the other question mark is not just where are you going to go when the ball's pitch? What are you looking at? How do you look to make a reaction play like that Manny made right there? Because Mike is a middle infielder. I used to sit there and watch the pitch be delivered, and I could see if it was going to be out, in, or misses target or whatever, and I started leaning already. At third base, you don't get that it, freedom to do it's that. It's very right? reactionary, H, and I, and I feel your pain, so to speak, because I never played an inning of third base till I signed a pro contract. I always played the middle. So that adjustment was big. I always felt like I could play the ball a little bit in the middle. And just your sights, you're looking only at the hitter. Because if you look at the pitcher and track that ball coming in, some of these balls are hit so hard that you just don't have time. It's a very reactionary position. I feel like it took me a, a legit two years to kind of feel comfortable wow. at the third base. So position. take us so. through some things. Where, where do you want so, me at? I, I want you at home plate. Okay. So we're going to talk bunt defenses because I think that's the toughest thing that a third baseman has to go through. And there's basically three scenarios. Okay. There's a runner on first, there's a runner on second only, or you have the runner on first and second. So right. for me, what, what my biggest key was I needed to have the ability to be kind of at a 45-degree angle so that I could see the pitcher and, and the base runner and the hitter. Did you turn your body that way? Yes, absolutely, 100%. Wow. I, did, I did it, and actually in the first clip we showed, um, I'm not sure who, was, who they – I couldn't see it from that far away. He was exactly in this position. position. Like so this, this is very important with the runner on second because you've got to go through your checklist of what's the priority. The priority has to be the runner on second. Right. Because if I commit to you squaring around and you pull back or you actually miss the bunt, if I'm way up here, I just abandon third base. This guy can just walk to third. So yeah. the first thing when I see the pitcher's leg go up to deliver the pitch, my first reaction is I look at the runner. He's not going. I know the pitcher's going home. My eyes are set right on the hitter. You don't have to turn your body. You turn I don't. Your head I'm nice. here. I'm okay. here because I know it's going to be a bunt. Very few times is a guy going to lace one at me. This is a sure bunt situation where you know they want to get the runner to third. Yeah. If we're running the wheel play, which we saw the, the example there on the video, that's when the shortstop breaks real early. He gets kind of a, an advantage, a three, four step uh, advantage on the runner that's at second. When I see him go, then I'm crashing hard. This is like do or die yeah. going in at it. And the priority there is to get the out at third. But usually when you're reading something, if the bunt's spectacular, you got to give them credit, try to just get the out. Right. So priority number one, base runner at second. Priority number two is knowing how athletic is your pitcher. A mm. couple notes, left-handed pitchers fall to the third base side. Yes. So if you have some left-handed pitcher on the mound who's very athletic, you know that bunt that's kind of in that in-between land? Yep. I can get back to third and maybe we got to play to get the lead runner. So all those things have to go through your head. Finally, how quick is the batter runner? Yeah. Because that guy can cause a lot of problems. Now, remember, when I played in the National League, there was no DH. So pitchers, you could take a big advantage sometimes when the pitchers were bunting. You have an athletic guy at third, I mean, uh, on the mound. He could get a bunt sometimes, throw it to me at third, and then guess what? That pitcher's upset that he didn't get the sack. You get it, and we fire straight to first. Maybe we turn a double play. Yes. So what I'd like for you to do, H, is the first one I'm reading. We're going we're gonna to simulate there's a runner at second or a runner on first and second. I got to see what's going on. Pitcher lifts his leg, and I know through PFP and spring training, who are the pitchers that have the mobility and have the accuracy? Some pitchers hate throwing to the bases. This is why you have to practice. You have to do it because okay. in the end, take it away from the pitcher if, he does, if he's uncomfortable in that situation. All right. Take it away. I'd rather get the out. So if I'm looking here, the leg goes up, I'm just looking in. If I said, this is mine for sure, I want to be able just to make it an easy play, come here. Now, what a lot of third basemen, I think, forget, run around first and second. If you give me a hard bunt, let's do that again. Okay. Everyone thinks we either get the lead runner at third or we take the out at first. But what happens when that guy, the runner at first, when there's also a runner at second, is not taking a great secondary. They're all assuming the play's going on. You yeah. bunt it hard to me, runners on first or second. Boom, you know what I want to do? Second base. Bam, that's still a lead runner. Boom. You know why? There might, be, there might be no outs. If I get the lead runner, this runner here at second, I'm first and third, one out, we got a chance double play, get out of the inning. Yeah. Or we might actually have a chance to turn two, now it's two outs, runner on third. Where it gets a little dicey 
is when you hit it right here and you really want to get the runner out of third and you want that, that pitcher to cover. Right here, see, I would take this away because I want to err on the side of at least getting one out. Get an out. You got to get an out because what you don't want is bases loaded, no outs, because now you put your, your team in a, in a real tough situation. Last point. If someone bunts into the pitcher, a lot of third basemen, sometimes they go there, they recognize it, they turn their head. They go back to the base, and when they look up, boy, that ball is right in front of your nose. Yeah. So you, you almost have to practice, and this is something that you learn through repetition, through your own PFP yeah. in spring training. Where can I get to? How many steps does it take to get back to the bag? Because for me, if it goes right to the pitcher, I want to be able to get back like this, one, two, three, and now I'm a first baseman. Yeah. Or and, runner and on no, second. don't take your eye off of him. You can't take your eye off of him. Some, some of these guys, my, my first big league start, I'll never forget, David Cohn was on the mound. We're playing the Blue Jays. They put the bunt down. It was a real nice bunt. I called him off. He came in, we ran into each other. So all I'm thinking is, oh, my God, how am I going to tell the Yankee media that I messed up? David Cohn gets off the mound great. So that's all I'm thinking. How am I going to explain How am I going to explain this? They go up to Coney after the game. What happened to the bump play? And Coney says, it was my fault. I got in his way. I was like, thank you so much. You know, but, but that's the lack of, you know, it was my first day in the big leagues. Wow. I didn't have the repetition of understanding how good an athlete David Cohn was because if I knew that, then I knew I could bust my butt, get back to third, yeah. we'd probably get the lead runner. The last thing I will say on this too, and this is what I'm learning with all this youth travel stuff. If a coach tells you where they want you to be, it's the coach's fault the ball's hit somewhere else. Yep. Or bunt it somewhere else. And when you understand that, what your responsibility is, then it allows you to be able to make the plays you're supposed to make.